1978, John Carpenter's classic Halloween would release and completely change the landscape of horror films as we know it. This simple, low-budget slasher flick would help popularize the subgenre, with films like Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Scream, and many more owing a large part of their inspiration to this original film. There was just something so appealing about the simplicity of it. A masked serial killer who silently stalks his prey before eventually striking, with an ending that left his fate entirely ambiguous. With all that in mind, it was obvious that a sequel would be made after, with Halloween 2 serving as the originally intended end to Michael Myers' story. This film would reveal the familial connection between Myers and the protagonist, Laurie Strode. It would feature much more gruesome kills, and it would end with the first death of our main villain, with him being lit on fire and caught in a massive explosion. With this film's ending, it seemed like a clear wrap on the Halloween franchise. The story was told, the villain was no more. It was basically everything an ending needed to be. However, the film was highly profitable, and it was evident that another sequel would eventually need to happen, which begged the question of how they planned to do it. That was what eventually led to Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. This film is very interesting, and even more so than that, is it controversial? Because when creating this film, the decision was made to respect the death of Michael Myers and have it be completely unrelated to the first two. This movie would act as the beginning to a new direction the series was planned to take, with Michael Myers being but one story told by the Halloween franchise and every movie following being an isolated story about the spooky holiday it's named after. And people hated it. Upon release, this film was widely despised by fans of the original Halloween who felt cheated and betrayed by the lack of the franchise's iconic villain. Because of this backlash, the plans for the anthology approach to the series would be ditched entirely, and the Halloween franchise would continue to be the story of Michael Myers for better and for worse. Now with all that said, you've read the title of this video. You know how I am with some of my strange horror takes, so you know what I'm about to say. Halloween 3 Season of the Witch is my favorite Halloween movie. Despite its bizarre direction, despite the wide hate this movie received and still sometimes gets despite its newer cult following, I cannot help but love this movie. And I feel that in honor of my favorite night of the entire year, I would talk to all of you about why. Now, one thing I do want to get out of the way right now is that this video is very much an opinion piece. This isn't me trying to prove that Halloween 3 is secretly the greatest horror film of all time, because I don't think it's close to even being the best Halloween film, but instead, it's just about why despite its flaws, it still comes out being the one I like the most. So, with all that out of the way, let's talk about Halloween 3, shall we? So starting things off, I think it is important for all of you to know when and why I enjoy watching the Halloween franchise. Halloween is one of those series that I refuse to watch unless it is specifically the time of year the film takes place in. Every October, I love binging as many Halloween-y pieces of media as possible, and it never quite feels complete without the movie series quite literally named after the season. And with that in mind, I'd like to bring attention to the original Halloween film and how despite being a fantastic movie on its own, it doesn't really have much to do with Halloween as a holiday. I mean, sure, the film takes place on Halloween night and Michael gets his mask from a Halloween store, but if you change to remove those aspects of the film, nothing would really happen. It would still be the same slasher film about an escaped serial killer who stalks and murders a bunch of students while a doctor hunts him down to bring an end to his killing spree. Compare that to Halloween 3, and it becomes very apparent why I like this film so much. For those of you unfamiliar with what Halloween 3 is about, the film follows a corrupt novelty company by the name of Silver Shamrock, 
which sells evil haunted masks that are specifically designed to kill anyone who wears them that watches their TV program on Halloween night. As well as this, the company has its own spooky group of evil corporate minions that hunt down anyone who learns the truth of the masks, killing them in brutal fashion. These minions are eventually revealed to be robots created by the company who bleed a mysterious substance that looks like pumpkin guts. Why would they do all this, you ask? Well, the company's owner, Connell Cochran, was someone who was raised on Celtic land who still believes in the old traditions of Halloween and wants to bring those old traditions of witchcraft and sacrifice back by blending them in with the new Halloween tradition of wearing costumes and going out trick-or-treating. This film doesn't just take place on Halloween. This film is about Halloween. I wholeheartedly believe that no other film in this franchise lives up to its title quite like Season of the Witch. It is very apparent here that this film was made out of a love for the season it takes place in and a real, genuine effort was made to reflect that. The masks, the evil corporate robots that bleed pumpkin guts, the little Halloween jingle that plays throughout the film every time a silver shamrock commercial plays, it all screams Halloween in a way that always gets me right in the spirits of my favorite time of year. There is nothing like it, which actually leads me to the other big reason I enjoy this film so much. This film is really, truly unique in the landscape of horror films, especially compared to the franchise it's a part of. Going back to the original Halloween, this film was so iconic and well received that it helped popularize the slasher genre, as well as creating and promoting almost all of the tropes we commonly see in it. Because of this, while I will always appreciate the original Halloween, I can't say I find it to be an incredibly unique experience anymore compared to every film like it. There are just some slasher franchises I enjoy more than it, and its unique merits don't stand out to me as much as they do for a lot of others. Halloween 3, on the other hand, is one of the most different and batshit insane films I have ever watched, and if you've been on this channel for a while now, you know that I live for these kinds of movies. If the original Halloween was a quiet, subtle slasher film, Halloween 3 is a goosebump story made for an adult audience. The premise alone is absolutely insane, and the way it's executed is even crazier. Almost all the characters we see throughout it have an almost cartoonish quality to them, with each having some kind of exaggerated personality trait that makes them incredibly memorable. Some of my favorite examples are the film's main villain, Connell Cochran, who acts so incredibly evil in most scenes you wonder how this guy was never suspected of anything before. Buddy Kupfer and his family, a group of ragtag salesmen who are stupidly loyal to Connell Cochran despite how obviously evil he is, and Marge, a sassy saleswoman who ends up dying one of the most brutal deaths I have ever seen in one of these movies. Which leads me to another major thing about this movie's uniqueness that appeals so much to me. Because of this film's absurd plot and premise, the kills and genuine moments of horror are unlike anything else I've watched. There's the kill I just talked about, moments where we get to see the evil corporate robot straight up pull a guy's head off with no resistance, and of course, there is the single most iconic scene in the entire film where we get to see the masks in action when one is used on Buddy Kupfer's child. This scene made my jaw drop the first time I watched this movie. Typically, in a lot of horror films, the child characters have a sort of plot armor that protects them from being killed, and such is the case with, like, every other Halloween film. But not only does this movie just straight up ditch that idea, but this death is brutal. We see Little Buddy, yes, that's his actual name, grabbing onto the mask, desperately trying to remove it before collapsing to the ground, complete with all kinds of insects and snakes crawling out of every open orifice on his face. It's such a disturbing visual that you will never see from any other film and it's stuck with me for a really long time after watching. When this film actively tries to be scary, it really can be. It's goofy for the most part, but there are moments like this and especially the ending where it completely catches you off guard. And speaking of that ending, if you do not want it spoiled, then stop right now because I love the way this film ends so much I can't not talk about it. You good? We set? Okay, cool, cool. This movie's ending is wild, like absolutely insane. 
My first time watching it, I had genuinely no idea how they planned to wrap it up. And by the time I actually saw what they did, I was just left staring at my monitor completely dumbfounded. I must have looked so stupid. The ending to this film goes as follows. After our main character, Daniel Chalice, manages to outsmart and kill Connell Cochran, he realizes he's now on the clock as the evil commercial that will kill everyone wearing a silver shamrock mask is still going to air at 9pm. He makes a mad dash to the nearest gas station with a phone to try and call off the ad, but is caught off guard when he realizes his love interest, Ellie Grimbridge, was actually one of Cochran's robots who tries to kill him. A fight ensues after Chalice crashes the car, which he wins, and he is then forced to run on foot to the gas station from the beginning of the film. It's here where Halloween 3 ends, with Chalice on the phone desperately trying to stop the broadcasts. His efforts seem to work on the first two channels airing it, however the ad is able to begin playing on the third, and it cuts to credits before we can even find out if they were able to stop it. A completely open-ended conclusion with genuinely terrifying ramifications to it. I just, man, I love the ending to this movie. It is the right kind of cliffhanger, one that leaves the fate of the setting and characters up to the viewer, but not one that leaves you feeling completely unsatisfied. Just the cherry on top to what was already a super special experience to me. I love this ending too because it does exactly what the original films accomplish in its own way setting things up for a potential sequel that could explore more isolated Halloween stories set in the same universe. Which leads me to my final point about why this is my favorite Halloween film, albeit this one being a bit less important to me than the other two. I genuinely adore the premise of the anthology series this film tried to set up and wish it was followed through with. Now don't get me wrong, I love Michael Myers as a character and there are quite a few sequels and reboots of the franchise I quite liked after 3, but being completely honest, I also respect how there was an attempt made with Halloween 3 to honor the death of Michael and have his story end right then and there with something new being brought to the table to take his place. The idea of one strange, interconnected universe of different tales centered around the Halloween season would have been fantastic to me. I would have loved to see many different directors' takes on what other crazy, whimsical stories they could tell within the confines of my favorite time of year. And when I watch Halloween 3, all I can think about is how good that idea was and what potential was wasted giving it up. Now, I understand I'm in the minority of people who feel this way, and I cannot exactly say I blame anyone for disliking the idea of that. The original story was about Michael, and without him it may not be the same Halloween that many people grew to love. But also, I feel that if this idea was just given more of a chance, it could have been made into something that people would eventually warm up to. Unfortunately for me though, that never happened, and I'm left with this one movie as a reminder of what the series could have been. I can't complain much though, because damn do I still love this movie. Halloween 3 is everything I could ask for in a film centered around the spookiest time of year. It is a film centered entirely around the holiday, filled with super unique and sometimes insane scenes that are incredibly memorable to me, and it represents an idea I find so compelling that I damn near want to steal it someday to make my own original work out of. That's just me getting ahead of myself though. For now, I'll just sit back and enjoy the movie like I have for many Halloweens before, and I hope after watching this you'd like to do the same. Halloween 3 may not be the best Halloween movie, but damn if it isn't my favorite. It is a great time that I think will get you and whoever you may decide to watch it with right into the Halloween spirit. So go ahead, turn it on, and don't forget to be in front of your TV sets for the horrorthon, followed by the big giveaway. Don't miss it, and don't forget to wear your mask. The clock is ticking, it's almost time.